Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Farrell. I am a co-founder and the executive director of Humanities Team. I am coming to you live from our Humanities Team studio morning, here in everyone. Boulder, Colorado. Hi, and uh, I am a co-founder. Oops, sorry about that. There's director. a little echo there. We'll pull that out. Okay, here we go. And uh, so as you can see on screen, I've got uh, Bruce Lipton, PhD, and Dr. Shamini Jane with me coming to you live. Hey, I'm going to properly introduce them in a minute. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure, Steve. Thanks. We are so happy to be here in a very strange world to offer some power and positive <laughs> information. Positivity everywhere coming to you live. Absolutely. All right. And uh, Bruce, you're coming in from, from where? And Santa Shamini, Cruz, you're coming Santa in from Cruz, where? Santa Cruz, California. Santa Cruz, California. Okay. And Shamini, where are you, where are you now? And I'm coming from the opposite coast, actually, out here in South Carolina. Okay, fantastic, and I'm in Boulder, Colorado. So uh, we, uh, you know, big thank you to Jim Gray, who at the end of the program will go, we'll bring him on camera. He's uh, pulling us all together. We've got some video clips from brand new programs. So we're going to talk about some brand new programs that we've yeah, been can, working on. I'd, I'd just like to yeah. ask, can can we have a visual moment for our dear friend Garth, who is always behind the scenes every time <laughs> we put these programs on? And I would like his shiny face just a minute to say hi, because he's wonderful. All right. OK, Garth Catterall. So up. Oh, I'm sorry. So we don't have a way to pull him on camera right this second. But, oh, uh, yes, my God. Garth! you know, yes, God. but uh, Garth, yeah, big shout out to you here, and uh, we appreciate you. Also, Jim Gray, and there, there's actually a whole team that supports these broadcasts, so thank you guys. Uh, so let's shout out to, there are a whole bunch of people watching us live. So in the green room, the Stream Plus people, and uh, I can see a lot of you on camera. Some of you are off camera, going to wave at you. Thanks for being here, you all. Uh, makes it a lot more fun to have a live audience. Also, we can't see the viewing room. I can't see all of you right now, but I know there's a whole bunch of you in the viewing room from Humanities Team. Shout out to you. All of the Bruce Lipton communities, and there are many. So, And the Shamini Jane communities, and there are many. So shout out to all of you. Hey, thanks for being here. We have people in these rooms and on social media, So, and we're live. So uh, if you come in in the first half hour of the program with questions that you have, that you want to bring to Bruce or Shamini, we'll try and get to as many of those as we can during the hour. So uh, yeah, the sooner you bring in things that you're curious about, the better. Um, okay, our theme here today is flourishing through chaos. And let me give Bruce and Shamini a proper introduction as we get going here. Uh, Dr. Bruce H. Lipton is an internationally recognized leader in bridging science and spirit. A stem cell biologist, the best-selling author of the Biology of Belief, and the recipient of the 2009 Goy Peace Award, Bruce has been a guest speaker on hundreds of TV and radio shows as a highly sought-after keynote speaker and workshop presenter. He lectures to conventional and complementary medical professionals and lay audiences about leading-edge science and how it dovetails with mind-body medicine and spiritual principles. Bruce is regarded as one of the leading voices of the new biology. And uh, again, yeah, great to have you with us, Bruce. And so, uh, and Dr. Shamini Jane is a psychologist, scientist, and social entrepreneur. She is the founder and CEO of the Consciousness and Healing Initiative, a nonprofit collaborative accelerator that connects scientists, health practitioners, educators, and artists to help lead humanity to heal ourselves. Major media outlets, including Time, CNN, and Good Day LA, as well as several documentaries, have featured her award winning research and presentations on healing topics. And yeah, Shamini, once again, great to have you with us and thank you. So awesome to be together. Thank you. All right. So Flourishing Through Chaos. So uh, a brand new program that we've been uh, working on. And actually there's a program right behind it uh, called Becoming a Conscious Creator. And it's the whole science of this, uh, of, of creating flourishing during challenging times. Uh, we've been working on these actually for, we started last year <laughs> on these. And uh, we're just now bringing this out and uh, next week. So on Wednesday at, this, at our normal broadcast time, so 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, we're going to be broadcasting that uh, program, Flourishing Through Chaos. So want to invite you all. Uh, we're going to put the link up. Uh, be sure to register for that program so you can be here. Uh, the stream community, the humanities team community, 
Uh, the Sign Network, uh, we're, we're actually broadcasting out to many of their locations here too. Uh, John Raymer leads Sign Network. Uh, so all of you, uh, be sure to sign up for this uh, free program. It's hour long. Of course, Humanities Team is a 501c3 nonprofit. So in these free programs, we seek to bring as many tools as, as, as we can to, to living you know, in these uh, challenging times. And this is a real goodie, as you're gonna see during the hour, because we're gonna go into uh, many of these topics. Uh, and some of it's kind of technical, I'll, I'll, I'll share, but uh, it actually all makes perfect sense. <laughs> You know, and I think uh, many of us will say, oh, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, but I bet you we're gonna get to some things you're not doing <laughs> here during this hour too, that are part of this flourishing through chaos uh, program. And then uh, they created a master class called Becoming a Conscious Creator, or getting into this whole science of flourishing. Uh, we'll talk just a little bit about that as well. And then when we broadcast next Wednesday and next Friday, we'll talk a lot more about those programs. So. Uh, okay, so we'll jump in here. Bruce, this is, um, of course, what your life work has been about when you left the medical school profession, this whole epigenetics thing and changing our mind and taking control of our future. And do you want to just kind of get us started here? Well, it, it, we've been starting this for a while, so everybody out there is in the process of starting something, and that <laughs> something is we're facing an evolutionary upheaval. It's a simple fact of life that today science has recognized it takes 1.6 planet Earth to provide for today's civilization. If we just stay the way we are right now, uh, it takes 1.6 planets. Now, obviously, we have a little issue. We, we only have one planet. The missing 0.6 is where the problem comes from. Uh, basically, what science has just come down to, it's not sustainable. You can no longer live on the planet the way we are living because we're undermining the web of life right underneath our feet right now. So science has revealed a very simple fact. We have to change the way we are living on this planet. Well, that means what? It says, well, culture and civilization, the way we uh, use the planet and the resources and, and pollute the air and water and soil and the way we're messing up the environment has to stop, which means, unfortunately, there's no fixing the existing system because it's the existing system that is causing the problem. So what's the point? It says civilization, as we know it, has to collapse. Whoa, wow, that's a big, <laughs> a big vision right there. But guess what? Science has already recognized this. NASA scientists have recognized that within the next 20 years and probably sooner, that civilization is facing what is called an irreversible collapse. Uh, the irreversible part I want to emphasize, we're not going back. <laughs> going back is where the problem came from. We have to go forward. Uh, and I say, so what's interesting about it? And I say, the world's chaos is shaking the, the rug out here and cleaning it up because we piled stuff under the rug for years that we never wanted to talk about because it just didn't want to play things like uh well the me too generation that uh women's rights have to come up now to totally equal rights on every level uh there's no such thing as second class citizen in that so women's rights that's why it's showing up all over the place and that's why we have to deal with it for the future black lives matter it's not just black it's brown and any other color uh that feels like look we we have not given a, a fair chance for a number of uh, cultures in this world to participate with us, uh, and that we have also suppressed a lot of people because of race and because of religion. And uh, this has to change as well. We cannot move into the future if we don't correct the problems of the past. Otherwise, we drag them along with us. So we have to deal with environmental issues, racial issues, religious issues, economic issues. Uh, oh, wow. And I go, so what? I say, well, that's the chaos, folks. The chaos is bringing up to the surface stuff that we can't leave this way if we want to move into the future. The future is absolutely going to be fabulous. The future is going to be great. And I say, it doesn't look so good from here. I go, yeah, because we're not there yet. Uh, <laughs> one system is coming down. A new system is coming up. Okay. Humanity's team is, is a major part of what? Organizing the uprising of the new civilization by providing us with 
knowledge. And he goes, so what? I said, knowledge is power. And uh, as I give in my lectures, uh, I could say the same thing in a, in a more <laughs> uh, present understanding. A lack of knowledge is a lack of power. And we have been misprogrammed as humans to feel that we are victims of a world that's out of control. When the current physics and the current biology and the current psychology all come together and say that was a completely wrong insight, we are powerful creators. Well, if you look at the world, you go, I, I don't think I created that. I go, well, we'll talk about it because it's our unconscious creation that is manifesting in the world. And when we understand this, we can take that unconscious problem out, replace it with consciousness. Here is humanity's team. We're going to replace this with consciousness. And when we have this consciousness, we will turn the world around. Now, not everybody's going to do this. It's those people who are awakening, awakening to their power. That's what's so important in this world at this moment. So very quickly, which is hard for me because I only have a few million words, but I'll try and get a last couple things here before my dear friend Shamani comes on. Uh, put it this way, very simply. The world that we've been experiencing is in a collapse state. Should I be afraid? I go, no, <laughs> because if it doesn't collapse, the civilization we're in is going to have a very abrupt ending, and it's not going to work. So look at the collapse and recognize this is actually a very positive sign, because it says we are in process. We're in a place where we're getting ready to move into another civilization, one that is not just sustainable, but a civilization we can all thrive into. Thrive? Well, that word hasn't been in the news in a long time. Yeah, but that's the destination. And uh, talk about thriving. This is, uh, Steve, where uh, my beautiful partner, Dr. Shamani, has wonderful information to offer us about mm -hmm. the changing times we're in. Yes, she mm -hmm. does. And, and, uh, and she brings it in, too. This is a true collaboration between Bruce and Shamani, a flourishing through chaos. And, uh, boy, the beautiful thing is, uh, just to insert this as we go over to Shamani, is as we awaken and, and as, we, as we elevate our own consciousness, we come into this whole delicious way of living, the honeymoon effect. You wrote a beautiful book about this, Bruce. And, uh, and then when, when we get to the 8% of us living that way, bam, you know, the, as Malcolm Gladwell says, tipping point, whole new way of living on the earth. So, and this is, this is uh, what they're bringing in, uh, really getting into the science of all of this, Bruce and Shamani here in Flourishing Through Chaos, and then a masterclass that follows. And, Yes, Shamini, please uh, jump in with things you'd like to share as we get started here. You bet. I just, I just want to connect in a little bit with what Bruce is saying about the promise and actually the power of this time. And the word that I think comes to mind for many of us is transformation. Steve, I want to talk about this a little bit also from ancient spiritual perspectives, because as many of you guys may know, we often say we're in the time of Kali Yuga. Okay, Kali Yuga, or some people will say Kali Yuga, right? So what is that? It's a cycle of time. And some people think that Kali Yuga is the age of darkness, but that's actually a really surface interpretation. What it is, is the age of transformation. Kali is actually the goddess of both time and space and that which transcends it. And what it means for us right now is when we witness all of the chaos that is going on, as Bruce says, it's actually the spinning off of the subconscious layers of our darkness, our ignorance that is coming to light. So the beautiful thing about that is chaos is energy and it's actually energy that we can work with. So once we recognize that there is actually powerful energy that is coming out of this awakening to what it means to truly be a conscious human, it's wonderful information that we can work with and say, yeah, these, these systems that weren't sustainable, that were based in things like greed and fear um, and oppression, well, they're not working. Why aren't they working? Because they're not actually aligned with our true nature. So it's a wonderful call to awakening for us to say, oh, now how do I work with this energy including the fear and anxiety that I may be experiencing, which is per perfectly natural. So while Brucey is absolutely right, no, we don't need to feel afraid or anxious. We might, 
right? It's a natural response to what's happening. So how do we flourish through that? Well, what's so beautiful is as my dear friend Bruce knows, and I know as well, there is incredible empirical science that teaches us how to harness this energy of chaos and align ourselves with the deeper divine truth of who we are to create a beautiful, sustainable world for ourselves and for others. So we can really tie together both the spiritual wisdom from age old traditions across the world, as well as the best science of well being and flourishing to allow us to move through these times with better grace and less suffering. And I think we all want that, right? We all need that for ourselves and for our communities. Yes, we do. Yes. And uh, it's, it's happening now. It's challenging because it's like uh, using metaphor of an airplane. We're flying through turbulence. You know, we feel that's the chaos. You know, we're, we're flying through that now. And of course, we, as we look out on the world, boy, you know, there's, there's a lot here, right? The drumbeat of extreme weather that's gotten worse. And I won't, I won't go on to the litany of things here. But um, yeah, we're going to go look at a video here in one second that really goes deeper on this. This first clip is from Shamani from... Uh, Flourishing Through Chaos, and well, there's a second clip we'll look at after that uh, that's Bruce. But I'll just share uh, to kind of bring home these points that uh, Bruce and Shamani are making. Uh, you know, we all have our personal stories here, you know, and my personal story, I won't tell the whole one here, but in the 90s, you know, I, I didn't really, uh, in the early 90s, I didn't get this whole thing of awakening and this whole oneness and wholeness and spiritual universe and, and, and things didn't really understand that, you know, and so my ladder was over against this wall that we've been talking about of more just, uh, you know, the old American dream with its upper rungs of fame and power and fortune and all of these, these things. Um, and I was uh, in, I was living in that world and, and, uh, but I was also seeing that it wasn't true what, what people thought it was, you know, that everybody was all smiles and, oh, financial fortune made everything so beautiful. I was in the forums where people were talking, you know, about their real lives with their partner and their kids and their coworkers. Oh boy, you know, wasn't you know, that that kind of stuff doesn't get out in the press so much. Uh, so I, I, I was there. And there was this contrast of, wow, you know, this isn't this this old American dream isn't the thing. Uh, and then I went through my own awakening experience of, you know, my God, you know, this is a spiritual universe. I have everlasting life, you know. This body's just serving me for this one, one life, and then uh, so I just took my ladder and moved it. So, and that's really what this, what this program is about is just moving our ladder from oh my God, you know, ultimate reality isn't that, it's this, <laughs> and then going and living into it, and then it's wonderful, you know, it's wonderful, and then creating a civilization like this, then it really gets wonderful because they're kids here, they're future generations. This is serious, you know, uh, and we can create an earth that's just so beautiful. For these uh, next generations, and, and we are, but um, we're we're in chaos right now. So, got to get from here to there. So, okay, we're going to go down into a clip. This is a beautiful clip of Shamani from the Flourishing Through Chaos program that we're broadcasting for the very first time next Wednesday and Friday. We'll go watch it, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. We're thousands of spinning atoms that are actually nothing but mostly empty space. Then the question is, you know, are we scrambled? This is chaos, right? We're talking about flourishing through chaos. So let's talk about what chaos is. It's energy patterns all over the place. What is, what, why do we call it chaos? Because we don't understand what it is. We don't understand what the information is. And yet we understand that we're in a sea of energy. So when we go back to some of the ancient traditions and pretty much all of them, look, the world you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was God, right? Nada Brahma, the world is sound. There are so many traditions that talk about the link of sound with consciousness. Again, how do we flourish? First, we have to come back to who we truly are. We have to come back and expand the connection with the deep core of our consciousness beyond our subconscious programming. So we understand that sound and sound making is such a powerful way to do that because, and you know, we, as you know, Steve, we get more into this in the course in terms of the ancient science and the modern science of sound, but we also get into practices because at the end of the day, it's all about cohering our field, right? Coming into coherence with who we are, coming into coherence with the deeper aspect of our consciousness beyond the conditioned mind. And as it turned out, all these ancient 
traditions knew of the power of sound to do that. And it's available to all of us. So we know about mantras, we know about gospel singing, we know about make a joyful noise. Just tapping into our own inner sound making allows us to cohere our energy field, spin off the things that aren't working for us. And let me just say this last thing, you know, when we think about flourishing through chaos, we're not talking about denying what's out there. We're not talking about the transformation that needs to happen. If we think about the co-creative process as actually being what I call G-O-D, right? Generating, orchestrating, and destroying. There is a process of birthing something, a process of maintaining that thing, and a process of letting go of what we don't want. When we connect with sound, we're actually engaging in all three of those at the same time because we're cohering our field. So we are able to spin off what we don't need and we're able to bring in fresh new energy and generate the energy needed to maintain a beautiful project, for example, that we're working on. Um, it's really amazing how, and you know, as and we, you know, we had more time, we can talk about this. We certainly do it in the course the amazing data that's coming about the power of sound to reduce anxiety, reduce pain, um, you know, so many things, even just modify our immune system and, and our aging, our cell aging. I mean, it's incredible. And this is all just the power of the uttered sound by our human voice. Okay, a lot of wisdom there. So we're gonna talk about it. Let me just share, there's a comment here uh, so Dr. Roshanak, who, now Dr. Roshanak, she's actually in back in New York City. We, we just grabbed her comment off of Facebook, uh, and she says, uh, hello, super excited to be here today. Bruce is hilarious. What a joy to feel his joy. Amazing panel. Uh, and um, uh, Shavani, uh, oh, fantastic. So, uh, and Dr. Roshanak is one of those work I was telling Bruce here when we were in the green room. A humanities team is creating uh, a, an impact fund right now. You'll see it in the coming months. It's a it's a global consciousness fund, all about elevating consciousness. And you know, Einstein said a hundred and two years ago, you know, that the greatest illusion in the world is the illusion of separation. You know, so maybe it's time we raise consciousness, right? Here, a hundred and two years later. Uh, so, and she's working on it. So, uh, Roshanak, big shout out to you, and uh, thank you for being with us. Okay. So what a beautiful clip there, and I love it, G-O-D, you know, kind of taking us in a new direction there. Uh, comments that you want to bring in, Bruce, on that. Basically, that's why I love this woman, because uh, she has such a great message that we could start to learn and live by on this planet, which is part of the evolution process. And we have to understand who we are. Uh, we are actually uh, energy beings in a world. Uh, and the, the beautiful part is, Knowledge is power, and what Shamani offers us is truly self-empowerment through the knowledge he offers about how we actually can control our own life experiences. Yes, we can. Yeah, and, even, and then bringing in uh, sound healing, you know, which was another, you know, which is so true. We'll, we'll go deeper into that. But you had a lot of wisdom there. That was a nice little treasure chest you opened up there in that quote, Shamani. Yeah, well, thanks, Steve. And yeah, I was laughing because I could just see it's funny to watch yourself, right? <laughs> These kinds of things. And I could see and feel the passion that I have for sound and sound making is part of the way that we come toward um, the connection with our energy field and the ability to flourish. And Brucey and I say this over and over. What is needed in the world right now is not just to share our suffering. I mean, that's part of the process, right? Is to, is to allow ourselves to feel what's here but also for each of us to recognize the power of our own ability to consciously create. And for me, and what I often teach for my students and what I'm also sharing in this course are some really easy practices. Steve, I can't tell you how many people feel shut down with their voice. I have yet to meet, I have rarely met maybe one in like a thousand people who say, I'm like fully there with my voice. I have no problem public speaking. I can sing in public, you know, all these things. And as you know, for me, both as a performer who sung everything from, you know, mantra to heavy metal, as well as having this um, privilege of being able to speak about the science of healing. I have come to realize what a powerful instrument 
each of our voices are. And we don't have to be professional singers or speakers or artists in the professional sense to come into our deepest capacities to use the voice for our self-healing and to voice what we want in the world. So I am really excited to continue to teach the use of inner sound making as a powerful unifier of our individual and collective energy for flourishing. I think it's been overlooked a lot and um, I really appreciate the opportunity to raise it as part of the flourishing process. Yeah, beautiful. Wow, and so true. And, and as you mentioned, um, it's really just the authenticity of our voice. We don't need to be, you know, some, some silver tongue, you know, that's really not, that's kind of the old world thing, you know. This is just about what's the opening our heart, what, uh, letting that honesty speak. Because uh, it takes us in, in these directions that we're talking about where, you know, where we see ultimate reality and we start living into it and we start creating this new, new homes, new communities, new planet, which is what this is all about, that there's this really glorious way of living. You know, we just need to, and, and it's been around forever, you know, back to antiquity. Mystics talked about it. Now science is affirming it. Settled science, uh, you know, as they like to say here with the Nobel Prize for Physics there. Entanglement, you know. My God, this is... That's not the science any of us grew up with. Uh, this is this is a oneness, you know. This is so. And I'll um, we're we're here for you all. So I'm going to come back over to uh, Bruce. Uh, things that you want to say here? Yeah, I, I'm just so excited to be here because what we're really recognizing this is an opportunity for us to have our own voice. Our voice has always been covered by other people who talk for us when we don't necessarily agree with what they say in the first place these the concept of government representing the people uh, honestly you know uh being a, a member of the united states recognizing my government doesn't care about us as individuals it's a corporate uh government and we have to now start taking our power back we didn't even know we had the power but now it's time to understand you are powerful. And that uh, is a very interesting thing. Community is the foundation of evolution. That we have to stop going from that Darwinian view, survival of the fittest and the competition and the struggle for life. And it's like competition is the complete opposite of evolution. Cooperation is evolution. And we've been living in a world that's so highly competitive that we're destroying each other trying to reach the top when the whole idea is to come back together in community. I'll just give a very important insight because people didn't realize this. Um, people only have power in community. What do you think happened during the COVID situation? Separate from each other, put a mask on, don't talk to each other, keep away from each other. In one moment, the whole globe the people lost all the power. I say, why? We only have power in community. If you break up that community into little pieces all over, we have no power. So uh, let us get together here. And this is what humanity's team is all about. Team is the big word here. Team is the cooperation aspect. Team is what we're really working on. And, uh, you know, and, and the idea, is it's not an accident to uh, take our power back. It's a mission statement to take our power back. And this is why uh, I'm so happy that uh, Shamini and I were able to put together this program that uh, uh, the humanities team is, is sponsoring for us. Why? Knowledge is power, and that's really what we want to offer you. We want to offer the people the power. I'm not interested in the corporations or the government, to tell you the truth. I'm interested in us. Uh, and all of us have a mission here, you know, and I see some wonderful faces I've seen before here, like Reverend Jeffrey and Susan and Linda and Sequoia. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, to you all, because you do represent our community. And, and, you know, just very quickly, the Great Depression was the Great Depression. And everybody, oh, you see all the pictures of homeless people and, you know, food lines and all that. Do you know that during the Great Depression, there were a lot of people that made money? <laughs> there were a lot of people that had a great life in the midst of all that? I say, so we never talk about them. I say, yeah, they were thinking differently. And this is what we have to do, is we have to start thinking in a different way because our programming has been all programming of disempowerment. 
Uh, and power has been the thing from the beginning of human civilization. Who's got the power? Uh, and very interestingly, there are three forms of power. The first and most primitive form of power was strength. That was that caveman with the big club and beat everybody up. And he's like, okay, that's the leader. Why? Because he's the powerful one. And then a second level of power arose, and that was what? Resources. Who owned the resources? Why? Because they could sell those resources and buy the power guy, make them the police. <laughs> so the power guys are still there, but they're under the control of the resource guys, okay? And then a jump again occurred. And the last and most important power is the power of knowledge. Whoever controls the knowledge controls the world as we see it. And the knowledge has been designed for the last number of years to take away our power and give it to other people. And then we look like, hey, victims, hey, what's going on here? I didn't ask for the war. I didn't ask for all this stuff. Then how come we have it? And the answer is because we have been uh, disempowered through knowledge of other people who have told us who we are. Oh, we're just victims in a world, and here's some pharmaceutical drugs for you victims and, and stuff like that. And the point about it is this. Knowledge is indeed power, but who did we give it to? And we didn't, we didn't give it to ourselves. We gave it to other people. And the only way through this evolutionary upheaval is to take the knowledge back. And this is what uh, Shamani and I have been offering in this program is you didn't realize how powerful you were, but let's let's illuminate that. Let's give you the light. Why? I trust the people. I do not trust the corporations. I do not trust the government. I trust the community. And thank God, humanity's team has a wonderful community. And Steve and and our dear friend Garth back there um, uh, have been working on this for a long, long time, and their work is coming to fruition. Yeah, the community is getting bigger and bigger and more powerful. And so I want to thank uh, Humanity's team for offering the knowledge that will help us get through this very trying time. And we can do it. I, I got one more minute. I, I just got to say it because there was a, a show that some of, uh, I could see some of the older members of our community might remember. A long time ago, there was a comedian, Bob Newhart, and he played a psychologist and I always loved it because he had the same response. Everybody, all his patients would come in and go, oh, blah, 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 blah. And then he would just look at him and say, stop it. Just stop it. That was his, his whole practice was just stop it. And you know what? I have to admit to the joy of actually listening to that. Uh, and I'm, very, I'm trying to get my millions of words here out quickly, but very simply it was this. Years back, I might have been considered manic depressive. Why? Because I'd be happy, and then some point I'd start to get depressed, and I'd start going downhill. Things didn't work, and then they didn't work more, and then more, and then things like, oh. And I was going through this one day in the lab where everything was going wrong, and I spent the whole day trying to fix something, and I wasted the whole day. And at the end of the day, I was sitting there going, oh, you idiot. I was talking to myself. You, There was nobody there. Uh, I, I was saying, oh, you can't do anything right. You wasted the day. You're so bad, blah, blah, blah. And I hear a voice, and it's not a, there's nobody in the room. I hear a voice. It's like right over here somewhere. What does the voice say? Don't you have anything better to do than to listen to this crap? <laughs> I stopped for a second, and I just thought, yeah, I'd rather go see a movie than go through this argument stuff. So I picked up a newspaper, found a movie, drove off, went to the movie, had a great time, came out of the movie, and guess what? I wasn't depressed anymore. <laughs> and then it started the next time I started to go to a, a little bit of the depression, just when it started, the memory came back. Don't I have anything better to do than to listen to this crap? Yeah, I can do anything. It was a choice. And all of a sudden I started exercising that choice. The great part, I have not been angry for over 20 years. For 20 years, things doesn't mean it works. It just means I don't get angry anymore. Why? <laughs> I have better things to do than to listen to that crap. Uh, and the idea about it was what? We all have that Bob Newhart moment that you're caught up in the world and it's like, oh, and then there's a moment that says, stop it. Do something else. And you know what? That's all it takes to get out. Because the moment you stop it is the moment you're free. 
And I just wanted to bring that in because our program is Let's get that freedom back to us. Thanks for my extra blurby for talking here to give me that. Thank you, Steve I and, and Jomini. I just want to say, Brucey, I love that you just shared that. And it resonated with me so deeply because it actually brought me to that experience that I had as a child. Now, I wish I were like you and could say I haven't felt angry in 20 years. It doesn't quite work out for me like that, but I've learned how to work with that energy. But when I was a kid, I felt the same way, even, you know, back in the 80s or whatever. It was a Cold War and all these things were going on. And and I had that same sort of, isn't there something else? And so I found myself turning toward, at that time, a lot of books to sort of make sense of our world. But I want to bring it back to what you said about community and the importance of coming into conscious learning community like we are doing right now and how incredible that is. I mean, look, also just bringing in some of what we know from the science on the psychological and behavioral levels, we know how much community heals. We know that loneliness kills and community and connection heals. But as you know, Bruce, when we study this from the energetic points of view, we can look at conscious community even in cells. And we know now that the literal connection between cells bioelectrically can actually help spread, prevent the spread of cancer. It's the same way with humans, right? So as much as we're able to make those conscious choices and decide what community do I wanna align with right now? What kind of field is going to nourish me? And how can I be nourished by that field and nourish it as well? This is all that power of community, which you spoke about. And a lot of us were seeking that even during COVID when we were separated in space. Now, hopefully we won't have that experience again for another pandemic. I truly hope that that will not occur again in the way that it did. It was, I agree, very devastating for all of us. One thing that I learned, though, is even when we were separated in space, we weren't really separated when we came together, just as we are doing right now on platforms like this, because this wonderful field of biofield science, which, as you know, I've been deeply engaged in for the past couple of decades, has showed us that our energy can connect even across time and space. So even when we connect at a distance like this and we engage in collective learning, and collective practice, we're literally feeding our field in measurable ways. And we know that from looking at the over 425 clinical studies of energy healing therapies, we can work with energy and information and connect with each other in ways that foster our flourishing. And so I just wanted to add to what you said that I really truly believe that one of the ways that we will continue to foster our flourishing is to make those conscious choices to come into conscious community in ways that we can be nourished. And I want to thank Humanities team also for the opportunity for us to be doing that right now. Yeah, well, thank you. And thank you all for Bruce and Shamini for the, your, your warm comments, uh, Humanities team. Um, you know, just as a nonprofit, you know, we have a different North Star. It's just, there's no, it's not top line, it's not bottom line. It's, it's, it's the world that we live in. And oh my God, you know, there's such a wonderful opportunity here to create these uh, lives and homes and communities in a world where uh, where we flourish, you know, and, and as we do consciously. And um, we're, we're really, there's a contrast here in this discussion, isn't there? Because we're talking about flying through turbulence, the chaos, you know, it's very challenging. Boy, we're not trying to duck that. Uh, we're, we're saying actually pain pushes is the only is the only good news here. It's pushing people and it's pushing us to really finally start living into, you know, these uh, mystical truths, what is shared back to antiquity, which science is now affirming. It's saying, this is real, you know? Uh, what we grew up with in uh, the Newtonian, Darwinian science, you know, a physical body, da, da, da. Yeah, it's true, we do have physical bodies. But in many ways, it's the least consequential thing. Uh, when we look at spiritual universe and everlasting life and, and, um, and living consciously where we see this wholeness and this oneness, and we could never start a war, you know, or we could never hurt our planet and create this extreme weather. I mean, we, we couldn't do, we can't do those things uh, where we're living consciously. So this is why we're all so passionate. And uh, this program, Bruce and Shamini just have all this brilliance, this genius that, uh, you know, around um, things, Shamini just a moment ago was, was referencing bioelectric communication inside your body. I mean, you know, so there's a tool. I mean, how many, <laughs> it's not a tool I've, I've been using, you know. There's, there's lots of tools here 
uh, that are inside of this flourishing through chaos, and then the uh, masterclass that they created uh, that follows, and it's called a Becoming a Conscious Creator, and it gets into the science of flourishing. Okay, we're going to go now to a clip. This is a Bruce uh, from the masterclass itself, and with these 16 modules and mentoring and all these things, uh, this program, it's brand new. Uh, we're just broadcasting the, the Flourishing Through Chaos for the very first time next week. So here we go. We're going to go look now inside of the masterclass that uh, Bruce and Shamini spent all this time creating. Here we go. You might be very, very familiar with a, a age-old understanding that knowledge is power. And while people understand that, it's easier to maybe look at it this way, that a lack of knowledge is a lack of power. And then when you understand that, then I say then any misperceptions that you hold about life actually represent a lack of knowledge. And through the sessions that I want to talk about, I want to give you the new knowledge. And there are two very fundamental misperceptions that the world has been programmed with that are completely wrong, and they take our power away. And the exciting idea is that we have a new renaissance in science, a, a renaissance where new information is coming in and challenging old beliefs that we used to teach for years and years. So for example, uh, there's a misperception that people have that biological processes employ Newtonian physics, and you go, oh my God, now what does that mean? Well, let me just make it a simple explanation. Uh, with Newtonian physics, the universe was divided into two realms, a material physical realm and an invisible energetic realm. So we have two different realms. But according to the physics, the principles of that physics is that energy doesn't affect matter and matter doesn't necessarily affect energy. They're separate realms. So as a result, uh, we look at the body as physical matter. And if we want to work with the body in medical schools, we understand that how do you work with a physical body? You use physical things such as surgery or pharmaceutical drugs. And this is how we treat a physical entity. However, in 1927, a new physics evolved, a new physics called quantum physics. And I just want to assure you a very important fact that quantum physics is the most valid of all the sciences on planet Earth. The significance is this, that all the theoretical ideas that preceded the discoveries, almost every one of those theoretical ideas has now been proven to be true. So in that sense, there was a deep understanding of the new physics back in 1927. And back in that 1927 date, it was understood that the universe is not made out of two realms. It's actually one realm. Everything is energy. Well, of course, now as you're sitting there looking around your world, sitting on a seat, seeing everything that's physical in your room, uh, this is going to be a very difficult insight at this moment because actually there is no such thing as matter. And uh, we're going to go into that because obviously that is a very difficult thing to take into your life and go, really? I'm in a physical world? I say, no, you're in an energy world. And the significance of this was back even in 1927, quantum physicists understood as one of the first principles of quantum physics that consciousness is what is creating our life experiences. It's our mind and our thoughts that are creating the world. Well, important understanding of that is, well, if it's our mind and our thoughts, then we're the ones that can change our mind, change our thoughts, and change our perception of the world. I go, precisely. It takes us from being what we might consider victims of a world out of control into a world where we actually have an input to manifest what we are wishing for and what we're desiring. Uh, and this is what this whole program is about, is to return that power to you, the ability to manifest and create your life. All right, nice clip there, Bruce. A lot of another treasure chest there. So, yeah, accessing this remarkable new science of healing your mind, body, and spirit through a deeper understanding of the intricacies of the interconnectedness of all things. Uh, wow. So that was a real wowzer. That, and and you've been making this point. You've been bringing this back around and again and again. We're not victims of our reality. We can, you know, we're uniting humanity here. We're bringing it back. We're coming back into our own power. This is how we do it. Uh, such an important program right now, isn't it? Because you're, uh, both of you, you're bringing in the science of how we do this. It's not just kind of pie in the sky. This is the science of how we do this. 
I'm real happy to say it is science because it has nothing to do with religious devotion or anything like that. Uh, I wasn't spiritual for over 40 some years of my life. Uh, and, and the interesting thing is, where did the spirituality in my life come from? It was looking at the cells. The cells were my teacher. Uh, and it's interesting because there's two ways to do research. The wrong way is, I have an idea I want to prove, so I'm going to do an experiment to prove it. That That is really bad because you're manifesting the result before you even did the experiment. The way to do the real research is just look and observe and don't tell the universe how you think it works. Just understand by looking at it. Uh, and the beautiful part about this is that the new science, uh, and that's the, the quantum physics, and most importantly, the new science of epigenetics. Uh, uh, we didn't mention that, but uh, the program that almost everybody has out there is that genes control their life. That's the stuff that I even taught in medical school for years. And they're still teaching it at school. I go, so what's the point of that message? You ready? Well, as far as we know, we didn't pick the genes we came with. And if we don't like the characters we have, we can't change the genes that we came with. And then add on top of that, we told you that genes turn on and off by themselves. And I say, what message did you get from that so-called science? And the answer is, we are victims of our heredity. In other words, oh, there's cancer running in my family. There's a gene. I'm going to get the cancer. I have nothing I can do about it. I'm going to get cancer. I'm a victim, victim, victim. That whole science of genetics is wrong. And I go, why? Because the idea that genes turn on and off, uh, number one, is 100% false. 100% false. Why? Genes are blueprints to make the proteins, which are the building blocks of the body. So genes are just blueprints. And I go, so what's important? I say, well, go into an architect's office where she's working on a blueprint, and you ask your architect, you ask her, hey, is your blueprint on or off? And she would look at you like, what, are you crazy? There's no on and off to a blueprint. Like, oh, precisely. <sighs> the point is this. Genes do not turn on and off. Genes are controlled by the architect, just as blueprints are controlled by the architect. And then I say, well, then who or what is the architect? And all of a sudden it turns out our mind is the architect. And I go, so why is this important? It's the, well, stop blaming the genes and start recognizing we are manifesting our health or our disease. Let me give you a fact of science. Less, less than 1% of all the disease on this planet is actually connected to genes. Less than 1% of illness has anything to do with genes. So then where the heck is all the illness coming from? Over 90% of illness is directly connected to stress. The chemistry of stress takes our gene blueprints and alters them in a very negative way, which ends up causing our illness. And why is this important? Because... Everybody wants to fix the genes, and nobody's talking about, you better fix the consciousness, because that's the one that controls the genes. And this is why I so enjoy working with Shamani, because there are technologies, there are ways to take the power back, there are ways to make your life what you want it to be. And to me, uh, this is so critical, but it's also because, hey, at one point, it was only a theoretical idea in my mind. You know, hey, science, that's theoretical. But I put it into practice. And let me give you a very simple fact. I couldn't get a relationship off the ground for over 40 years because my programming and my subconscious mind was controlled by observing my father. And he had a dysfunctional relationship with my mother. What do you think I downloaded? A program of dysfunction. So my life was ah, no love, no blah, blah, blah. Once I understood this insight about programming... I changed that program. And guess what? I have been living a honeymoon life for 28 straight years. What does that mean? That means every day I wake up and go, hey, still here, having a great life, love, everything is beautiful. I have two, two lives. And the idea about it, let me summarize it very quickly because most of you have seen the movie The Matrix. You say, oh, that's science fiction. I go, no, Matrix is documentary. What do you mean? I go, what's the premise? Oh, everybody's been programmed. I go, that's not a premise. That's a scientific reality. We're all been programmed. 
And then I said, but what was the other premise? Well, if you take the red pill, you get out of the program. And most every one of you have been, every one of you has been programmed. It's not most. Every one of you has been programmed. That's just human development in the first seven years. But many of you have taken that red pill. I said, what was that? Falling in love. Now, it didn't have to be with a person, although generally that's what we talk about. But you can fall in love with a pet. You can fall in love with being a chef. You can fall in love with being a gardener. And I go, what's the point? When you fall in love, that is the red pill. When you fall in love, just give the honeymoon for an example. Your life is blah, 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 blah. You meet somebody. 24 hours later, you've fallen in love. And 24 hours later, oh, life is so beautiful. Life is wonderful. The food is great. The music's great. It's old enough uh, community. The sex is great. Everything is great. And I go, how did blah, blah, blah in 24 hours become heaven on earth? And the answer was, it's the first time you stopped playing those programs. And all of a sudden, you became the creator. And I go, so what's the point? I say, a honeymoon isn't a short little venture after you meet someone and then turns into regular life again. A honeymoon can be there every day of your life. It's your program that has taken you out of that. And this is what Shaman and I get into in our, our, our work, is if you understand the nature of the program, you understand the nature of your self-empowerment because that's when you can interface your program and take the power back. And that's why we're so excited about our, our special program together because it's knowledge of A, how it works, and knowledge of B, what if you want to take your program back? How would you do that? And so uh, I'm so excited because the whole show is empowerment. Yes, it is. I'll, I'll share, too, just as a testimony to this. You know, gosh, back in my Silicon Valley days, um, as I was uh, heading out on vacation, I had all these things I had to get done. You know, and it was, it was this mental, I was a logic center of the mind back then. So, you know, with my tasks and I'd have this hundred things. Oh, I got to do all these things before I head out on vacation. Then invariably, my wife uh, was my girlfriend then, uh, would, would share this is true. Then I'd be sick my whole vacation because I... You know, stress, stress, stress of, oh, got to get these hundred things done. And then I walk out the door and, <laughs> you know, uh, now, no, I mean, I, you know, now this whole love, which can be, and I love my wife and I love my kids and I love my coworkers. I love, but I love this work. I love this whole aspect of conscious living, of, of awakening, of supporting people in their conscious journey. And. Uh, which is the opposite of stress. It's this whole kind of like sitting on this raft that's floating above this whole up and down life. Um, and so I'm personal testimony to this. So man, I'll tell you, I can tell you about the hundred times I got sick, you know, just from stressed out uh, in, the, in the whole uh, Amer old American dream thing versus the whole new way of living, which Bruce calls the honeymoon effect or creating heaven on earth, uh, which is real. You know, it's real where... Boy, we just get uh, the juicy thing out of life, and and then most importantly, because I'm a boomer, and I've so I've had such a you know such a great life, uh, but boy, you know I have kids, and there are a lot of kids in this world, and there are future generations coming in, and you know this Indian thing of hey, let's you know there's, there's a future here for these people. Our job is to to uh, as a to do more than actually leave no tracks. It's regenerative now. You know, God, let's bring it back. You know, the planet and the living thing is, is why we're so um, excited about it. And, and this program just goes in a whole new direction. The science that they bring in, you know, again, bioelectric communication inside your body, okay, which uh, Shamani was talking a little bit about, identifying these uh, limiting self-destructive -destruct subconscious programming, Bruce, uh, and Shamani talk about accessing this remarkable new science of healing your body, mind, and spirit through a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of all things. Conscious control of the perception proteins built in some, some of your cells and membranes. Okay, we're going off in a new direction here. This is a science that uh, it's remarkable. So uh, just so excited about it. I just want to share um, next Wednesday, we, we are not doing our normal broadcast. We broadcast every Wednesday. 9 a.m. We're actually going off the air because we're just going into this broadcast of flourishing through chaos. Uh, I think Shamani's with us. Uh, Bruce is actually heading off to uh, 
Austin and then Switzerland. So boy, it sounds like a fun trip, Bruce. But uh, Shamani will be with us next Wednesday, the 8th. And then again, we're going to do an encore on the Friday the 10th, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific. And uh, be sure to uh, register for that program, Flourishing Through Chaos. You don't want to miss it because uh, we're going to get into this in a much deeper way. Um, let me come back to you all here. Um, Shamani may be first, and then Bruce. So we only have about four and a half minutes, and I know Bruce is actually catching this flight out of town. So he is. heading right off yes. on his trip. He's, so he's we're catching him just before he goes out the door. Creative energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, Steve, yeah. I just want to say one thing about the role of hope. You know, and this really came up a few weeks ago when Brucey and I had the privilege of teaching in the Maldives at a beautiful program um, called the Soul Festival. And we had a scientific panel at the time. And I want to raise this because it's really important. Um, it relates to a lot of what we've been talking about. Stress is the number one cause of disease. And we're understanding the pathways of that through psychoneuroimmunology, which is my home field of study. As you know, that's what I did my PhD research in. So we understand that. But sometimes we misunderstand the role of hope on health. And I want to speak to that because at that panel in the Maldives, there was a really wonderful scientist who said, well, you know, I, I have heard of people, for example, who went into remission, spontaneous remission, there's no such thing, remission from cancer, but she didn't do a surgery or a chemotherapy or anything. But I'm worried about sharing that story because I don't want to give people false hope. And that set up a huge discussion because there were other patients or people in the audience who had done the same thing. And I just want to say that where we are with the science, it's not an either or people. We don't have to choose because what the science is actually showing us, as Brucey is saying, is number one, we are not victims. We are conscious creators. Number two, we have so many resources available to us for our healing and flourishing. And the role of hope is there's no such thing as false hope. So when we look at the world and we feel stressed out, that's fine. It's a natural response. What we want to do is not prolong that response. So all the practices and techniques and science that we're bringing together in this program are about acknowledging the world, acknowledging the sense of stress that we might feel and allowing ourselves to transform it. And the role of hope is huge. What does hope do for our nervous system? It actually opens up our system. It allows us to take a deep breath, literally a sigh, open our hearts, enhance our vagus nerve activity, which allows us to be receptive to new ideas and nourish ourselves with prana or life force energy. So hope is actually fundamental to our process as conscious creators of our health and our life, there's no such thing as false hope. So I want us to think about that as we, you know, kind of volley through the world and think about how we flourish. It's not just that we have to shy away and freak out about stress. I mean, we don't have time to talk about that right now, but you know, there's many stresses that are good for waking us up, but then we want to hold hope. It's really, it's a beautiful and really powerful healer for ourselves and for our society. And I just, I wanted to share that because it's been so present with me over these last few weeks. Beautiful, yeah, yeah, thank you. And Bruce, your uh, closing call to action here. Well, uh, let's just uh, continue with what Shaman is talking about, hope. Let's recognize a very simple fact that up to two thirds of all healing in the medical world is due to something called the placebo effect. And the placebo effect is hope manifesting itself, meaning a person has an illness, it's chronic, they've been, whether it's cancer or whatever the disease is, and then their doctor comes up and says, we got the greatest new medicine right here. This medicine designed for just what you have, it's going to heal you and it's going to be great. You take this medicine because this is the one that you've been waiting for. You get healed, and then you find out later that the pill was a sugar pill. <laughs> well, the point is, what healed you, the sugar pill or the hope of the sugar pill? And the answer, of course, the sugar pill didn't do anything. It was hope. It was the positive vision that people were holding that created the healing process. Now, that is positive thinking. And I go, yes, it is. And then I say, people have been, oh, yeah, we all know the placebo effect, positive thinking, healing, blah, blah, blah. And I go, but you never talk about negative thinking 
I go, what do you mean? I go, well, that's negative thinking is the opposite of positive thinking. Sure. But negative thinking leads to something called the nocebo effect. I go, what's that? I go, well, positive thinking can heal you of any disease. Listen to this fact of science. Negative thinking can cause any disease. Negative thinking can cause cancer, whether there's no gene involved at all. Negative thinking can cause you to die, and there was no reason other than the belief you were going to die. And I go, so why is this important? Because our level of positive thinking never exceeds our level of negative thinking that we've been programmed with in this world. Oh, it's not going to work. There's a problem here. This can happen. That won't happen. And, and I say, so are we creating our world with our positive thinking, or are we trying to survive in a world based on total negative thinking? There's not enough. I won't have enough money. I won't have health care. I'll be one of those people on the street. I won't, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going, that is the cause of the big problem on this planet. And we are programmed to do that every day. Just watch the news. Oh, yeah. How much of the news is life is wonderful and beautiful and you can do a lot of great things and you could be happy and healthy. And I go, yeah, that's that's news. But no, no. Here's the war. Here's the disease. Here's the blah, blah. And I go, we are constantly being fed negative information without recognizing that negative information in our mind is called the nocebo effect. And that nocebo effect, negative thinking, can cause any disease and actually cause you to die if you believe it. So let's wake up. Let's get out of it. You know, watching the news, I say, how much benefit did you get? Or how much influence did you have in changing the world by watching the news? The answer is you have absolutely no ability to change the world. And the news could actually just take away your incentive from doing anything because it's all so negative out there. I can't do anything. And I say, it's time to create our own news. And our own news has stories of positive development, positive health, positive energy. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, to my way of thinking, uh, the mission statement of humanity's team. Let's, let's start sending out the good news. Let's start sending out the news that says, you are powerful people. Because all the other news you got was to disempower you, make you a victim. Because when you're powerless, you'll pay anything to be healed. <laughs> and I go... First, I convince you you're powerless, and then I sell you the pharmaceutical drugs. And it's like, oh, that's a bad story. Shaman and I want to teach you that you're powerful. You don't need the damn drugs because your mind will make the drugs that you need. And the humanities team offered us a platform, and we're so appreciative, Steve, uh, for this opportunity to uh, let's put some light on some stuff because the darkness is... Boy, and we are we are so grateful to be... Uh, bringing this brand new program out, first flourishing through chaos, and then the soul science of co-creation that follows. And uh, also, just so people know, uh, we are now taking these new master classes like this, and we are translating in 75 languages. So, wow, you know, our country coordinator in South Africa down in Cape Town was looking at that, and he was going through the languages. Oh my God, we've got a lot of the continent here, which, you know, usually it's, you've got four or five or six languages. Uh, we're even getting <laughs> getting out through, uh, through like that, the African continent, covering a lot of the uh, countries there. So real excited about it. Um, I'll just share as a testimony as we're about to go off the air uh, in the positive direction, because I shared, you know, not so fun there in the 90s there in my Silicon Valley days. But um, so the week before last, my wife and I went out to visit our daughter, who's in her first year of college in New York City. And uh, Stephanie somehow picked up COVID. We were together the whole time. Uh, came home and she isolated. Uh, I didn't. Get, I never got COVID. You know, I just. I was just this perfect love, this perfect light, this conscious living. I just kept my mind there. Uh, kept my mind right on this. Of oh, you know, and this, doing this program. I had a full week with all of these kinds of things, uh, programs going on. I wouldn't have been able to participate in these programs if I got sick. And I've just, my mind was not getting sick, staying in this perfect love, perfect light, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, here you go. The contrast of a guy that got, you know, a little tickle went into all these infections, you know, back in the 90s to now, man, I can walk through storms, you know, and we all can. That's, that's the point. This is, this, 
as Bruce and Shamani are talking about being powerful, you know, and uniting humanity, it's, it's this. We, we can all take our lives back. We can take our world back. So, okay, join us, Flourishing Through Chaos. Uh, Bruce and Shamani, thanks so much for being here with us. And uh, again, Bruce is heading straight for the airport. So thanks. And then, and then Shamani had a board meeting here just minutes before the start of this. So thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. And we're off the air next uh, Wednesday because we're broadcasting the uh, Flourishing Through Chaos program. We'll be back on the air in two weeks. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And I'll wave because I can see everybody in the studio. There are a lot of you off on camera. Again, thank you all for being with us. It makes it so much more fun, you know, when we have a live audience and it's not just us, blah, 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 back and forth here. Um, also, we should pull the camera back. Jim Gray, uh, Garth Catterall, who's been mentioned, Annette Kennedy, D. Meyer, that's me on the couch. That's Jim over there uh, that's handling the broadcast. So um, D. Meyer, Andy Gooski, a Abby, Johnson, all of the people that support me and this programming. Thank you guys. And, uh, and thank you to you viewers. We're, you're watching because we're all in this conscious journey together. And I know we covered a few things at least that uh, are new, the new tools that we can put in our toolkits, so to speak. Uh, and it's all about just deepening into this conscious journey, right? You know, and there's no, it's an upper, it's a spiral staircase. It just keeps going up. There's no, no upper end to it. So you know, and that's what we love. We're just bringing more and more tools to living consciously so we can all enjoy this honeymoon effect that Bruce talks about. 28 years. Woo! You know, let's all live like that. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, love and peace and blessings to all of you. And thank you. And uh, to Annie and Margaret and your team and Shamini, to your, uh, your assistant that's been working closely with us. Thank you. Okay. And thank see you. you in two weeks, everybody. Love Have and peace day, and blessings. Everybody. Thank you. <laughs> okay.